Hello students, in my previous video, I uh, stopped up to the entrance or the entry of Cyril. Now let me continue. George, here at Cyril, you have been with me to the club once or twice. They don't laugh at me and call me Pompey M. B. Pearson, do they? Do they uh, call uh, uh, me Pompey M. B. Pearson because you went to the club with me many times? Please say to your mother. Now, Cyril is now in a dilemma. Whose side he will take now? The side of his mother or the side of his father? Now, see the dialogue. Cyril, well, yes, dad, I am afraid they do. So, frankly speaking, dear father, they actually make fun of you. Now, it is too much for George Pearson to handle it. Now, George Pearson is heartbroken from inside. George slowly looks from one to the other and staggered. George, slowly, well, I'll be damned. George exits left. Now, it is too much for George Pearson. I already told you all. Now, George Pearson exits from the main stage. George exits left. That means he moves towards the left direction. This is the stage direction. Right, left and all this. Almost as if somebody has hit him over the head. His body language was like someone uh, hit him over his head. He is totally disappointed. Now, let's continue. Cyril, after watching him go, turns indignantly to Mrs. Pearson. Cyril, now you shouldn't have told, uh, you shouldn't have told him that, mom. That's not fair. You have hurt his feelings, mine too. Now, mother, why have you uh, did it? Why have you insulted him? And why had you forced me also to insult him? You should not have done this. Uh, in the first place, you should not have done this. Mrs. Pearson, this dialogue is very important. Sometimes it does people good to have their feelings hurt. The truth ought not to hurt anybody for long. Truth is bitter, but it is better to digest the bitter truth then to leave every time with a fake thing. The truth ought not to hurt anybody for long. If your father didn't go to the club so often, perhaps they would stop laughing at him. Yes, now your father goes to the club every now and then. If your father occasionally goes to the club, then there would not have been any problem. But he's a regular visitor and so he became a laughing stock. Cyril, I doubt it. Mrs. Pearson, severely, in a very angry manner. Possibly you do, but what I doubt is whether your opinion's worth having. What do you know? Nothing. You spend too much time and good money at greyhound races and dart tracks and eye shows. You spend your time in greyhound races, in gambling and what not. You don't spend your time in genuine work environment? I think so. Cyril, well, what if I do? I have got to enjoy myself somehow, haven't I? Huh, it's okay. I have to enjoy myself, haven't I? Mrs. Pearson, I wouldn't mind so much if you were really enjoying yourself. But are you? You are wasting your father's money. You are wasting your own money. You are spending time in pubs, gambling. Then you are going in the dog races also. Uh, you are spending money in the greyhound races or dog races, in the dart tracks and ice shows. You are going in the parties. Excessively, you are enjoying your life. There should be a proper balance, but you are not doing that. And that is what Mrs. Pearson, or else we can say Mrs. Fitzgerald. We know it by this time, personality is change bodies. That is one of the core concept or theme of this drama. She is saying... Uh, I wouldn't mind so much if you were really enjoying yourself, but are you? And where's it getting you? There is a sharp, hurried knock hard off left. Now, when this conversation is going on, it seems that someone is knocking at the door. Cyril, might be for me, I will see. Now, Cyril is saying it might be some of my friend came. Let me see. Sir, Cyril hurries out left. In a moment, he re-enters, closing the door behind him. Mrs. Pearson, it's, it's that silly old bag from next door. 
Now, old bag is uh, obviously referred to Mrs. Fitzgerald, but we know it is not Mrs. Fitzgerald. It is actually Mrs. Pearson. Mrs. Fitzgerald, you don't want her uh, here, do you? Mrs. Pearson, sharply, certainly I do. And don't insult her. She is an aged woman. Uh, show some respect. And uh, she will go on rebuking Cyril in front of Mrs. Fitzgerald, that is in front of Mrs. Pearson only. So let me continue with this line. It's that uh, silly old bag from next door, Mrs. Fitzgerald. You don't want her here, do you? Mrs. Pearson sharply, certainly I do. Ask her in and don't call her a silly old bag. She is a very nice woman with a lot more sense than you will ever have. And practically speaking, she is more rational. She can uh, take care of herself. And uh, she is more clever than you are. Or practically you, would, you, would, you won't be as much clever as she is. So it is better you sh show some respect to her. Cyril exits left. I already told you left. It is the stage direction. Mrs. Pearson finishes her stout, smacking her lips. Cyril re-enters left, ushering in Mrs. Fitzgerald, who hesitates in the doorway. Mrs. Fitzgerald, come in, come in, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Mrs. Fitzgerald moving to left center anxiously. I just wondered if everything all right. She was very anxious. Cyril, no, it isn't. Now, Mrs. Pearson will review Cyril. Now we know it is actually Mrs. Fitzgerald. Of course it is. You be quiet. Cyril, indignantly and loudly. Why should I be quiet? Mrs. Pearson shouting. Because I tell you to. You silly, spoiled young pecan. I told you. You silly old boy. I told you to be quiet. You be quiet. Mrs. Fitzgerald, oh no, surely. Mrs. Fierson, severely now, Mrs. Fitzgerald, just let me manage my family in my own way, please. Now, you don't have to poke nose into it or you don't have to come in between us. I am speaking to my son. Let me manage my family in my own way. But we know that Mrs. Pearson, despite the humiliation she faced, uh, she had a soft corner for all her family members. So she is trying her level best to protect her family members. But she was stopped in the midway by Mrs. Fitzgerald, who is now acting as Mrs. Pearson. Uh, I repeat, now just let me manage my family in my own way, please. Mrs. Fitzgerald, yes, but Cyril, Cyril, sulky and glowering. Mr. Cyril Pearson to you, please. Mrs. Fitzgerald, Cyril stalks off into the kitchen. Now, Cyril gets very disappointed because uh, his mother rebuked him in front, of a uh, in front of her neighbor. So, he went to the kitchen once again. Now, the conversation will be between Mrs. Fitzgerald and Mrs. Pearson. And uh, you will get to know now, dear students, that Mrs. actual Mrs. Pearson will say Mrs. Fitzgerald that enough is enough. Now, let us change. Mrs. Fitzgerald, moving to the sofa, whispering, Oh dear, what's happening? Mrs. Pearson, nothing much. Just putting them in their places, that's all. Doing what you ought to have done long since. Yes, you could have done it. What I'm doing it, I'm just putting them in the right order. You could have done it many, many days ago, but you haven't. Mrs. Fitzgerald, is George home? She sits down beside Mrs. Pearson on the sofa. Mrs. Pearson, yes, I have been telling him what they think of him at the club. Mrs. Fitzgerald, well, they think a lot of him, don't they? No, they don't, and now he knows it. I told your husband everything. What the club member actually think about your husband. He is the laughing stock to them, to each and every one of them. I told everything to your husband. So that sometimes the bitter truth 
might rectify one's personality. Let's see whether the same thing happens in the case of your husband. I told everything to your husband. Uh, no, they don't. And now he knows it. Mrs. Fitzgerald. Actually, it is Mrs. Pearson. We know it by this time. Oh, dear. I wish you hadn't, Mrs. Fitzgerald. Mrs. Pearson. Nonsense. Doing them all a world of good. And they will be eating out of your hands soon. You will see. Very important line for your question answer. Uh, this line is important. What Mrs. Fitzgerald is trying to say to Mrs. Pearson in this line. Though actually, it is Mrs. Fitzgerald only. But here, the dialogue is being told uh, from the point of view or from the perspective of Mrs. Pearson. Because we know personalities change bodies. So, it has been told here that let me manage them a bit. Let me... Uh, let me counsel them, uh, them a bit. Let me put them in a proper order. Then only they will take food from your hand. That means that they will abide and obey you every time. So let me work on that. Doing them all a world of good and they will be eating out of your hand soon. You will see. Mrs. Fitzgerald, I don't think I want them eating out of my hand. Mrs. Pearson, impatiently well whatever you want they will be doing it all three of them mark my words mrs pearson now mrs fitzgerald told mrs pearson just let me go on with this act a bit longer a bit let me change their perspective of looking at you because they are not uh, showing any sort of respect to you and uh, you became a, a person uh, who is being treated as a garbage. So let me actually change their mentality and mindset towards you. That is the thing I can do. So please give me some time for that. And I'm just going through the last line before I end this video. Well, whatever you want, they will be doing it. All three of them. Mark my words, Mrs. Pearson. So what she is trying to say to Mrs. Pearson that just wait and watch. I will train them in such a way, maybe my way of talking with them is very rude, very harsh, but it is not only for your betterment, but it is also for their betterment. Let them realize your importance in the family and the children should realize the importance of mother in a family. And the most important thing is that then only they will be proper individuals and they will be self-independent. I want to make them self-independent because they are blindly dependent on you in whatever thing they want. So let me go on with this game of deception a bit. Let them rectify, let me rectify them morally and mentally. That is what Mrs. Pearson is trying to say. Uh, they will be doing it, all three of them. They will obey and abide by you. Let me continue this act of deception a bit longer. On your behalf, let me try to train them. Then only they will rectify their mistakes. Maybe by words are bitter, but ultimately it, it is good for them. So uh, I am stopping in uh, my lecture session up to this. Uh, in my next video, I will continue from the next line. Dear students, listen to it and any doubt, please clarify. Thank you students. Thank you all.